Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. At the forthcoming Thunderbolts Project Conference, EU 2017, Future Science in Phoenix, Arizona, experts in a variety of disciplines will present groundbreaking evidence for the role of electricity in nature. In the Electric Universe community, Many contributors have come from a background in engineering, where applied technologies and industrial processes may provide intriguing analogs for natural phenomena. One of these speakers will be Garrett Hill, the CTO of the company Thrival Tech, where he and his team develop plasma technologies for various applications, including the internal combustion engine, with the goal of providing the world with more effective emissions control solutions. We asked Garrett to introduce himself and to explain what has drawn him to the Electric Universe community. My background started out in the uh, performance automotive sector, where I was designing, building, and racing vehicles. And I developed a lot of skills there, but none that immediately seemed to pertain to this concept of, of an electric universe besides my capacitive discharge spark plugs, right? So that you get more bang for your buck in the cylinder. And after I stopped working in that sector, I immediately jumped into atmospheric research and was doing some atmospheric research in Colorado and quickly realized that there was a lot of electrical activity going on in, in the eastern part of Colorado, as well as there's Tornado Alley, which is close to that zone. And that was really exciting because uh, I had met up with a crew who was sort of veterans in, in chasing storms and capturing data. I jumped on board and we ended up chasing a tornado through about three states, caught up with it. This is in 2009 in Wyoming and got up close and personal with, with an F2 tornado and actually went inside the tornado. And I got a real intimate interaction with the storm. The balance of all of these forces, these, these electrical discharges that were happening inside of the clouds and the anvil that was sort of leading the storm in close proximity to the tornado and all the mesocyclones that were surrounding the zone. And after I came out of that tornado, it was really clear that there was an immense amount of knowledge to be had by observing nature. And these principles that we obviously can be using to better humanity and better the world at large. And so I immediately dove into R&D on different types of technologies that would be able to utilize these principles that I became so intimate with in that storm, vortex dynamics, plasma discharges, and also experimenting different ways to interact with gravity, to understand gravity better, this thing that we call gravity, right? After a couple of years of that, I ended up meeting with meeting up with a crew here in Ashland, Oregon, and uh, we developed a company called Thrival Tech where we initially set out to make the internal combustion engine more efficient and pollute less, if at all. And in our R&D, we, we discovered a lot of amazing things, where in various types of plasmas that we could generate, we, we were able to observe a lot of interesting phenomena when, when we, for instance, in our diesel particulate oxidation technology, of which we have patented, where we, we were subjecting carbon particulate uh, to high voltage electric fields, and we would get this self this 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 effect that would strongly resemble self assembly. I mean, it was it was really fascinating, really amazing. It was it was a bit jaw dropping, you know, it, it, these things that spur out of some rudimentary experiments that you're not anticipating, and and it's and it's really it was really amazing to to discover that, you know, you can generate these type of effects that strongly resemble biomechanical motion or or swarm behaviors that you see in fish or in birds uh, or in insects and so on. It's littered throughout nature, swarm behaviors and self-assembly. And so when we saw that we could manipulate this carbon material, which essentially comprised carbon nanospheres, we were able to really get a good handle on how we can utilize those principles to reduce emissions on a diesel engine, for instance. And so by discovering or rediscovering this inherent effect, when you put those two things together, nano, carbon nanospheres and, and, and really strong electric fields, you get this type of effect where you have a more apparent control over carbon particulate inside of a diesel engine. 
all of this soot that's spewing out of all these diesel engines is a big issue for everybody on this planet as we breathe the same air. And so, you know, through these phenomena that, that we discovered in the lab, you know, we, we wanted to really apply it. So that's exactly what we did. We immediately directly applied that uh, to the engine. And, and now we have a really good and effective technology to reduce the carbon particulate matter in the internal combustion engine. So that's one application. Another is when we were looking to be able to reform different different gases, essentially. Uh, you, you, we wanted to, say, take the hydrogen out of the hydrocarbon bond, and we wanted to separate everything, right? But we wanted to use the hydrogen for hydrogen-enhanced combustion as sort of a pre-ignition fuel treatment system. And the only way we could do that efficiently was what academic uh, science has, has taught us is, is fuel reformation of various kinds, but the, the science behind some of these I would say unconventional methods of fuel reformation were were largely unexplored, and uh, with regard to applying a high voltage electric arc, initiating uh, an arc discharge, and then applying a magnetic field to it, I mean you end up getting this really beautiful rotating plasma that strongly resembles a galactic plane in a lot of different modes. You know when you look at something that's supposedly light years in diameter, and you're looking at all the Hubble telescope images and so on, and then you look at your laboratory experiment and it's one and a half inches in diameter, but it's really challenging to tell the difference just in the image. That starts giving us a lot of ideas on what's going on in nature. And so we were able to utilize the, that phenomenon uh, that we, we rediscovered uh, in, in our lab to to apply to a really efficient method of fuel reformation where we could generate high quality synthesis gas from hydrocarbon fuels of various types by applying these principles. And, and we since then have archived thousands of videos and images on so many different types of benchtop galaxies, you know, uh, for lack of better words. And we're doing a whole classification chart similar to how Hubble initiated his classification chart just because of the fact that there's so many different ways you can you can change the input parameters and yield staggeringly similar optical phenomenon as you would see coming out of Hubble. And so, you know, more and more we're realizing that there's a strong electric field component to a lot of the natural principles that we can see throughout our daily life. And we are ever more excited and inspired to to keep on applying that and, and developing technologies that will better, better us all. For continuous updates on space news from the electric universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.